so um, anirudh you you are talking about uh, being raised in the dharmic way of life so what what does your day look like uh, essentially uh, what happens is like uh, what we say uh, at least when it comes to yoga sutras they say that uh, it's the brahma muhurta if your brahma muhurta is good if it's positive the entire day will be positive for you so what i try to do is the 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 starting of the day should be the best so that the momentum carries on and uh, it makes you productive throughout the day so what i try to do is the uh, at least the first part of the day is to uh, you know cushion the mind and the body so what i begin with uh, different asanas of yoga and uh, first what i try to do is uh uh try to do those uh, uh asanas which uh which sort of refresh your mind and then i do those asanas which uh, refresh the body and then you are in a perfect state to absorb the day so that is what i try to do uh, as soon as i get up uh, what i try uh, what i do is uh, i sit in a dark room and i practice uh, thyrakam which is uh, an ancient yogic technique uh, which helps you to uh, be stay focused throughout the day what you have to do is you have to sit in a dark room uh, you have to uh, place your agnya which is the your third eye according to the the kundalini yoga your third eye here which is the center of the forehead uh, you need to focus there and then uh, you need to uh, put your eyeballs on to the tip of the flame the flame as the flame wavers only your vision should follow the flame you sh- you shouldn't nod your head so you should sit and the candle flame should be at the same level same level as your uh, level of uh, your sight and then you need to sit like that for say 15 uh, 15 10 minutes take a break and then you in uh, like uh, three sets like that and then uh, and when you come out of the room it's a whole different world it's like you know waking up to a new day again after you get up from sleep your mind is completely refreshed it's light and it's it's ready for the day because when you get up from sleep the mind still needs to you know uh, it takes time to become active and, and to help you participate in your daily uh, activities so this is a nice way to get, uh, uh, throw your uh, baggage from previous uh, day and uh, get ready for the next day and then as you know we would have slept in different postures we would have slept in different postures and if your body has to be in the right shape and uh, for uh, the activities of the new day you need to uh, get them right and uh, and you can uh, do three four asanas just three four asanas is enough to get you ready and then uh, if uh, suppose if you give your best time of the day for your mind and body the entire day will be perfect this is what i try great. to do and that's an excellent practice one question i want to ask both of you uh, at this point is did you ever have any uh, missionary or an evangelist a lay evangelist from your uh, class or in your office approach you with the gospel message right so um not in my class i was i think uh, a bit fortunate for that but uh, definitely uh, you know i was faced a couple of times on the streets uh with uh, you know a young girl especially this happened with me at least twice uh with a young girl just teasing me and trying to tell me about it and uh, i was very very fortunate by then i realized that you know uh how to actually give it back the first time i couldn't the second time i just folded my hands and i very politely said that i'm very proud being a hindu so i don't really need it and she was taken aback for a uh, for a moment and she really didn't know how to react uh she thought of teasing me again but i think uh, she then dropped uh, the idea but this is something that's happened uh, even to my uh, mother there was this lady on the train who befriended her and uh, while she used to travel to her office and uh, after you know establishing a good friendship one fine day she decided to or probably even earlier she uh, you know started to stalk my mother and uh, one fine day she landed at the doorsteps of uh, our home uh, now this is a story that was of course that that happened uh, you know just right before my birth so this is something that my parents always narrated to me uh, but considering the fact that i i belonged like my my granddad was uh, a commissioner 
uh, so it was a police colony so it didn't really work well for her she couldn't manage and uh, we managed to kind of uh, my mother and my granddad managed to uh, you know show her the way out telling that you know this is not something that we are in need of we are not going to they did leave a couple of books and etc which for some reason my family accepted and they kept it but they declined uh, politely and she was asked to not uh, kind of visit again or try or make another attempt to visit so so the point to be noted here is it's not just the vulnerable people and the people that look needy that are approached with this gospel true. message true Correct. So Anirudh, did you have any um, uh, this kind of experiences? Um, no, um, I, I, I don't have uh, any such experience coming across uh, any missionaries or, uh, uh, or any such uh, evangelists. Uh, but I've had friends who have spoken about Bible, but uh, because uh, I was uh, early on, as I said, I was much... deeply rooted in my own dharma i could uh, counter with facts and uh, uh, and uh, also uh, sort of you know uh, challenge them on uh, whatever that uh, they they whatever whatever that they would say on uh, our uh, dharma or, or based on their uh, based on their knowledge and uh, but they did approach you sorry but they did try to uh, talk to you about it no they didn't ask me to convert but uh, they were they were playing this game of one of manship that uh, they were sort of uh, belittling our uh, beliefs uh, and uh, right, right. Were... i mean that's that's one of their strategies i mean they have a, a tailor made strategy for uh, everybody so when they saw that you were deeply rooted in your own dharma and you knew your facts uh, pretty well so they had to change the game for you especially so and because you didn't come across as a needy person yes that is why i also say like uh, it is not just enough that if you read uh, uh, your own scripture say the gita or ramayana you should be well equipped with facts from their scriptures as well the bible and the quran so that you can counter on their uh, you you need to take the battle to their scripture not us you shouldn't always be defending you should always be on the offensive as well So, correct i mean i mean it was written on your forehead loud and clear that you were not looking for any salvation and you were deeply rooted into your uh, dharmic into your dharma but still still i must say they had the gumption to come up to you and talk about and present their uh, present the gospel to you yes and the messaging comes from uh, uh, like in different forms you know it just that it bible is the last resort they have other uh, uh, they, they have other tools such as you know like when they go into uh, when you have these uh, montessoris and play homes uh, during the period of christmas santa claus comes in and it's all merry making and happy and rosy and all that so santa claus becomes a figure to uh, you know uh, appeal to many small kids and can uh, kids are innocent right children are innocent so that gets again so as they grow then these memories become imprinted because these were the happy times and then santa claus becomes a figure of happiness and then from santa claus it leads you to christmas from christmas to church from church to bible so that is the route. Right. that is the happy route the other route is the route of exploitation through charity and all this stuff you do most of the ngos here they go into they hardly approach people like us uh, because in the middle class and the urban middle class and all that but uh, there are certain uh, forces which are also working even in the urban uh, uh, with the urban middle class for example in punjab and all others so if you if you the, the first thing that they attack is your pride uh, once the pride is lost then uh, you are just a clean slate you can be manipulated and you can be you can just be transformed into anything so that that is what uh, they try to do uh, in every action that they choose to do you know whether it comes to hindu festivals whether it comes to the clothing whether it comes to uh, the food we eat everything uh, that is why media is playing a very strong role in that uh, in that kind of messaging but i'm glad that the people are fighting back and they're going into their uh, books that that's what uh, even dayanand saraswati swami dayanand saraswati at once said now we actually uh, now i actually uh, under understand the importance of it he had once said that if hinduism has to revive then it we have to get back to the vedas so i'm glad that uh, people are uh, going back to the vedas yes. 
so uh, what is your organization about samyukta bharata uh, when was it incorporated or registered and uh, tell us everything about it so samyukta bharata is a very very uh, new organization it's still in its nascent stage we're in the process of uh, uh, registering ourselves the legal processes are on unfortunately because of the pandemic it's uh, getting delayed every now and then uh but uh, the entire idea of samyukta bharata essentially is to perform our individual duties towards rashtra and dharma both um so some of the key activities that we will be focusing on is uh, temple protection temple revival gau seva <clears throat> vedic pathshala and encouraging indic content indic author authors writers uh, content creators as much as possible so there are two ways in which we operate one is online and one is offline currently our organization has around uh, 80 members from uh, all over india and uh, because currently we are just in a particular city we ensure that we keep uh, hosting online sessions as well uh, online programs as well to keep the entire community our entire uh, samyukta bharata family connected so on ground is uh, where we focus a lot on uh, uh, temple protection temple revival attempts are being made uh, in the same direction <clears throat> we are in works we will uh, again unfortunately because of the pandemic our plans are getting interrupted every now and then but a vedic pathshala is something that uh, is in works currently the curriculum currently is in work uh, we are looking out for the logistics uh, etc and online what we try and do is essentially we again like i said uh we try and get experts uh knowledgeable people and uh, authors to talk about very topics so right from temple temple history identifying temples temple architecture what uh, it means to free hindu temples to uh you know say something about our itihasa sections into our itihasa uh then we did another session of uh, dating of mahabharata uh, so these are the kind of very topics something about arthashastra knowing our actual indic uh, history uh, which is not distorted uh, from the experts themselves so these are the kind of things so apart from uh, it's not just on ground or not just online it's kind of a mix of both at the moment and uh, like i said we are in our nascent stage so definitely how long has it been since you started this it's been around uh, two and a half somewhere around to somewhere between two to three months oh okay very yeah. very young yeah very young very young but uh, it's shaping so up it's your... shaping up the way we want okay so what what's the ground activity ground activity like i said Uh, so if i can divulge a little bit of details i will not get into a lot of details uh, for reasons known but uh, we identified a basti in the city that we are operating in uh, which was encroached a lot by the missionaries now the bastis around it are totally they've gone they've, they've converted completely this was one such basti which uh, they couldn't manage to uh convert or enter into successfully but uh, there's a temple right at the entrance of the basti uh that they had converted it into a dumping ground and uh, all sorts of uh, anti social activities used to take place uh late in the night uh, in the temple ground just to ensure that people stop visiting the temple then there were also attempts to build a mazar right next to the temple even though the basti has uh, no muslim family but these were the ways that uh, you know uh, the elements were trying to encroach upon the basti uh, so we got to know of it uh, because of our members again a coordinated effort we got to know of it we went we did a recce we understood we met a lot of them from the basti we tried to understand the situation and uh, what's happening with the temple and uh, also rss was involved and uh, this was picked up very seriously by them as well so in coordination we uh, took up the work of uh, reviving the temple of course the, the the entire cleaning activity laying the ground again the boundary walls paints electricity everything we had to revive the temple uh, anyhow so that that work happened and uh, i think during ram navmi uh there was a small puja and uh, the temple was made functional again 
Now that's not where our role essentially stops. Activities in the temple will continue. There'll be an achara, there'll be a pandit. Regular pujas will happen. <clears throat> Activities in the temple will happen. And it's the same temple ground where we are also planning to open up our Vedic Varshala. So to ensure that uh, it, it's always buzzing with activities. Uh, the next is uh, we're a little bit into Gauseva as well. So one of our members uh, is taking care uh, of uh, more than 50 cows and bulls. And uh, uh, so a lot needs to be done there as well, because currently it's an open ground. Uh, there's no proper infrastructure there. So that's another uh, thing that we're working on, trying to build on the infrastructure. And again, they are into organic farming, Vedic farming, and uh, they teach Kalari Patu uh, as well. Uh, so again, once the situation gets back to normal, health camps, uh, Indian martial arts camps, etc., is something that we'll be setting up. Uh, we'll begin to set up there soon. Uh, so these are the kind of activities uh, that are in works currently. Uh, our main aim essentially is going to be to get uh, to attract a lot of youngsters as well. Currently, as we all know, again, you know, colleges are shut, schools are shut. We can't be uh, approaching them. And of course, to approach them first, we need to build our own credibility uh, as an organization. So currently, we are laying a strong foundation basis, which we can then start uh, approaching a lot of uh, youth to kind of uh, invite them to become a part of the Samishra Bharata family. So um, at the core, how many people are there? You said uh, across the country, you have about 80 people, 80 members. Correct. So, uh, so uh, more, more importantly, more important than the number is the age group. What is the age group of your core membership, the executive committee? Correct. Uh, so currently, uh, uh, we have three to four of us who are... Uh, uh, involved in the day-to-day uh, -day on ground activities and all of us are uh, 30 below we are all in the range of 25 to 30 all all four of us and all and of you have your education very fascinating that uh, even uh, so we have memberships right from an 18 year old to a 65 68 year old uh, which is extremely, extremely fascinating. And especially from the younger crowds. I mean, you know, there's this 19-year-old uh, who messages us and who's, who's constantly, you know, he, he uh, is on top of everything that we're doing. And he keeps messaging me that, you know, Didi, I want to, he's not in the city that we operate, uh, but he keeps messaging that I, I want to contribute. I want to become a part of the core team and I want to do something. What is it that I can do? So it is absolutely wonderful uh, when we receive yeah. such messages, especially from, you know, 18, 19 year olds. Um, so we just uh, uh, come up with a campaign. So now it's not a full fledged campaign as of now, but it is just an idea that we wanted to put into the people's mind, which is like uh, rupee ki seva. Now, the idea is that even if uh, we set aside one rupee per day for seva and there's enough of us uh, to take this sankalpa, uh, the corpus fund that we'll end up collecting for all the dharmic activities that we need to do will be more than enough to, uh, you know, sustain our ecosystem and our activities. Uh, so we have just launched it on uh, our social media platform just to kind of get a sense of uh, how people are reacting to it, etc. And uh, there was this member who actually donated uh, one rupee that particular day, the moment he came across that uh, post. Uh, so the idea was to kind of uh, keep it aside, set us aside, and you know, when uh, there's enough at the end of the month or the year or something like that, they could pass it on to us. But uh, he just came across and he wanted to do his bit, and he did that, which was absolutely um, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And he, was a he was a child. Yeah. What was his age? I think what uh, he was around like 15, 16 or something. Okay, that's very impressive. So I see that you're doing a lot of ground activity. Uh, it's not as easy as, as simple as sitting in front of a camera and uh, producing content. Uh, groundwork is a whole different ball game and needs a lot of funds. So that makes me ask you, what is the source of your funding? So uh, what, we, what we would like to talk about is uh, funding should also 
bring value uh, to our purpose and to our organization and uh, whatever money that comes into the organization as revenue need, needs to find its worth so what we are trying to do is we are connect to we are uh, finding a mechanism or working on a mechanism that adds value to our dharma which finds its worth in the market so what we are going to do is we are going to convert all our uh, knowledge of content uh, knowledge of products that come out of our dharmic understanding into products in the market for example one of our members is into uh, ayurvedic entrepreneurship so she is uh, studying uh, different scriptures like Ch- charaka samhita and different samhitas samhitas which uh, ha- has a uh, uh, substantial knowledge on home remedies ayurveda and uh, body care uh, based on natural sources all natural and uh, she is converting all her knowledge and her family knowledge uh, which hasn't been documented into uh, recipes for such product for, for such products and products for, um, and products itself now we are going to take this into the market and we are going to sell Th- this product serves two purposes one is it brings income to uh, the organization and second is it also uh, gives publicity and uh, sort of it uh, um, introduces people to what ayurveda actually is and what all is available for, as remedies in uh, ayurveda that is one thing and there are many such uh, products that we are exploring that is one thing second is we have a goshala in uh, in kerala and uh, we are uh, also in the process of preparing different products based on uh, the uh, cow products you know really? cow mm-hmm. cow based ghee and natural ghee and uh, cow dung cakes panchagavya and all the things so uh, so we are looking at uh, those products which can be monetized which add value to our dharma as well as become the source of revenue for the organization and uh, the other thing is that we are looking at actually is uh, donations and we are uh, very transparent about that as well and donations and networks with other organizations such as we have teamed up with a few other gurukuls in the country who are producing already uh, like uh, quite sub- quite a substantial amount of knowledge content uh, for example they are also exploring uh, how board games from our uh, puranas can be used to bring back and revive certain parts of our culture Uh, there are many different games uh, uh, based on that so what we will be doing as we'll be working as partners with such organizations to make their products accessible to the market so and in that in that sense we we will share uh, whatever kind of revenue that we can uh, uh, gain from our uh, partnerships so that is what we are looking at every uh, every source of revenue we will make sure that uh, uh, adheres to our dharma and adds more value in what we do and it is not just about pursuit for financial sustainability and all that as long as you are doing good work i think sustainability uh, will naturally come for the organization adding on to anirudh's point is it, like he very correctly said it's going to be both um, uh, one is uh, the additional revenue now these are going to be our secondary uh, sources of revenue primary essentially remains donations because uh, uh when you're looking at uh, larger activities like when you're looking at opening up a vedic patshala or something like that um to get the right kind of teachers the right kind of experts to collaborate etc uh we also intend to host our own uh, indic literature fest somewhere in december uh, 2021 or uh, january 2022 so for activities like these definitely we will be relying heavily on uh, direct donations and uh, for other secondary uh, sources of revenue continue to remain uh, like how anirudh mentioned uh, because they don't just add value to our organization but even to everyone involved in kind of uh, promoting our uh, dharmic value and uh, how do i put it um dharmic way of living the knowledge system. yes the knowledge systems yes so it's it's going it's essentially a mix of both and uh, excellent i mean the, yeah. the pursuit of samhita of bharata is not just about you know like uh, activities as such we have to uh, make an effort to build an entire ecosystem that transcends you know like from physical activities to uh, uh, the different media platforms that we are going to create Uh, information dissemination and also research becomes an important part of our organization 
so we'll be uh, in the process of you know uh, uh, writing different proposals offering given research uh, partnering with organizations which offer research grants into like uh, exploring uh, our own uh, uh, dharma and different scriptures you know so uh, like that we have identified many different organizations such as indic collective uh, center for indic studies and uh, for example like studying various aspects of uh feminism as a part of uh, sanatan dharma which was already there thousands of years ago but has it found space in the current narrative so all this becomes a very important part of narrative building and for that research needs to be uh, you know uh, uh you know research needs to be happening constantly we cannot always depend on uh, old facts and uh, put them in uh, package them into different forms but also new knowledge needs to keep coming in so we are also going to focus on that correct so uh, i mean talking about funds the one aspect that is missing in us but is a plenty in the opposite camp mm. that is the funding so money is something that we don't have and they have in tons i mean they have in surplus so uh, when we are talking about activities there are so many people that are passionate about doing something but they cannot because of lack of funding true so um i like your revenue model i like how uh, you have put together uh, some uh, ideas for sustaining yourself but like akshita you said that you know larger projects or larger events definitely uh, uh, needs to direct donations so uh, would you like to make a request to uh, our viewers very happily um so we we already took you through um a little bit about samyukta bharata we give you gave you an insight on what samyukta bharata is and uh, definitely uh, we are in the nascent stage but uh, the will the intent is uh, definitely there and uh, like i said vedik patshala which will involve uh, bringing our next generation into the dharmic fold is very very essential to us and the fact that we are going to identify more temples more such temples uh, to revive them and protect them these two form the essence of an entire ecosystem uh, so for that definitely uh, we will be needing your help we will be needing your seva as we like to call it so um, in case you happen to like the idea of samyukta bharata or anything and everything that we're doing uh, to know more about samyukta bharata you can visit our twitter handle same name samyukta bharata and you will stay updated you will get to know a lot more about the activities that we have done up till now and in case you want to know uh, more about it again you can approach us uh, through dm on uh, our page and we will respond almost instantly so if you believe in uh, the idea of samyukta bharata in the idea of our seva of our sankalp please please uh, do uh, donate contribute make your contributions do your seva and we are absolutely transparent about where every single rupee goes uh, this is something that we followed since uh, day 1 every time we make use of every single rupee the uh, the donor the one who does the seva is instantly updated as to where his uh, money has been used or in case somebody is willing to let us know where he or she would like uh, their seva to go again we dedicate that amount to that particular seva only uh, also we are in work we will soon be having our website uh, up and running as well so again uh, whenever you have you would you would want to know more about samyukta bharata you can visit our website as well till then we are uh, available on our twitter handle so please feel free to uh, stay in touch yes uh, as part of this also i would like to mention is uh, there is substantial funding that is available in the temple ecosystem but because the temples are under government control in india it is a very big obstacle for organizations such as us Who, who, who would like to collaborate with temples and create learning centers there which is why the free temple movement in india is 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 so important for us 
and uh, the momentum is picking up and through your platform i would like to again uh, request viewers to please support the movement and uh, hope uh, temples would be free of any kind of uh, government regulation and uh, control and uh, hope the temples will back will be back in the hands of its uh, truthful uh, devotees so that we can revive our dharma in in both letter and spirit thank you yeah uh, one thing i want to tell the viewers is uh, i told it at the beginning and i would like to repeat it it's really nice to know that these kids the organizations that um, kids like akshita and uh, anirudh have taken upon themselves and have started i mean th these are actually more than just organizations these are actually movements i would like to call the the idea behind bringing these people on to this platform is uh, i mean akshita has her own channel and uh, she could reach out through her channel but why did i have to bring them on to this channel the idea behind uh, doing that is to create an awareness to create an awareness that uh, about to what level this uh, fight has reached fight has gone so when kids like this who have chosen to get their hands dirty uh, take themselves on to the ground leaving behind uh, their potential careers uh, or maybe um, I, i don't even know if you all have day jobs and you do this during your weekends or uh, spare time i would give you a chance to clarify that to our viewers but what i'm trying to say is uh the the potential that they had they leave that kind of potential and they have chosen to get on to the ground and uh join join the fight so organization is just a front it's is just a name uh for the sake of uh being for the sake of putting yourself out there because uh, maybe for for legal reasons also but more than the organization itself it's the passion it's the uh, it's the commitment to the cause so uh, i would like to encourage the viewers that are watching this to support such grassroots organizations especially that are uh, created by uh, youngsters are young generation or next generation so to say so uh, akshita and anirudh all the best for your uh, sankalpa i hope all your uh, goals come true and you are able to do uh, the the indic uh, conference or uh, something that you are planning to do in december all the best for that much needed events and uh, i mean i would like to clarify that do you do you have day jobs both yes, of you or yes. Uh, yes, we do. okay we do. okay yeah, and uh, this is your um spare time work or or is it a weekend uh, no, it's cool. every single minute every single minute uh, i mean that's there on the back of your mind i know but yeah but your physical uh, yeah, so, hours so, yeah so physical hours for me especially because i am in a shift based uh, Uh, career right now so it's before and after and also this is something that i'm trying to do with my channel as well wherein i try and get experts to talk about anything and everything uh, current political and indic so it's uh, all three for me right now even my work i'm just very very fortunate that uh, you know i'm able to do it in the same direction my work is also something that helps me contribute to my cause and to my purpose so all three of them are aligned So technically, twenty four seven, I am just uh, dedicated to the cause and purpose. Right. That that's that's a great commitment. Same thing with you, Anirudh. Uh, no, sir. The mine is uh, completely into research. So that is uh, uh, research and public policy. But that is my bread and butter. But uh, uh, my mind is always on dharma, which is the heart. So that that is just to sustain. I mean, in the samsara, that in the material world. but uh, what transcends above all this is uh, the purpose of life is the purpose of my life and that is committed towards uh, our uh, strengthening our dharma for for ourselves as well as for the society okay okay 
So uh, links to all the uh, related social media handles will be in the uh, description below. And I would request the viewers to go visit their handles and look at the activity that uh, these guys are doing. And if not anything, you could at least leave your best wishes on their handles and uh, support them in any way you can. So thank you so much, Akshita and Anurad, for uh, joining us and for the brilliant work that you guys are doing. And you, I wish you all the best. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so thank much, you much for, this, for this opportunity, Esther. Absolutely. So yeah, much. it was an honor. Yeah. Thank you for watching, uh, viewers. I'll see you in another episode. Until then, namaste. Namaste.